Understanding slopes is really valuable. Think about it as a building block, because there's more to graphing a line than just the slope. In this lesson, we'll do a quick review of the different parts of slope-intercept form before working through a problem. If you know both the slope and the y-intercept, you can write an equation of a line in slope-intercept form. You might know slope-intercept better as y equals mx plus b. In this equation, m stands for the slope and b represents the y-intercept. The y-intercept is the point on the graph where the line intersects the y-axis. The y-intercept is a point, but b is expressed as just one number. This is because the y-intercept will always be on the y-axis, so it's always at 0, b. It's good to know that x and y are points on the graph. If you plug in for x, you should be able to find y. And if you plug in for y, you should be able to find x. Let's look at some examples. We have the equation y equals 2x minus 1 and the corresponding graph. Looking at the equation provided in our slope-intercept form, we can see that the slope of this line is 2. And since b is negative 1, the y-intercept will be at 0, negative 1. Let's look at another line on the same graph. Our equation is y equals 2x plus 1. Notice that the slope is the same, 2, but the y-intercept is different. Our initial y-intercept was negative 1, but the y-intercept for our second line is positive 1. These two lines will go on forever and never intersect since their slopes are the same, but since their y-intercepts are different, the lines are parallel. If an SAT question asks you to find the equation of a perpendicular line, one that crosses our given line at a right angle, then the y-intercept doesn't matter because the slope of a perpendicular line is the opposite reciprocal of the slope of the original line. To find the slope of a perpendicular line, take the slope of your given line, in this case, 2, and write it as a fraction, which makes our slope 2 over 1. Now, flip the fraction to find the reciprocal. Here, it becomes 1 half. Finally, add a negative sign in front of it to find the opposite reciprocal. So, one possible perpendicular line of our original line is y equals negative 1 half x minus 1. That's a lot of useful information about slope-intercept form, as well as parallel and perpendicular lines. Let's apply some of our handy info in an example test problem. In the figure above, line L passes through the origin and has a slope of 2. What is the value of k? Our answer choices are A, 4, B, 6, C, 12, and D, 24. As always, underline the facts, circle the keywords, and label the answers. We're told that the slope of our line is 2, and that the line goes through the origin, or the point 0, 0. We're also told that line L passes through the point 12, K. We can use our slope formula to find K m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Since we know our slope, we can set the fraction equal to 2. We can also plug in the values 0 and k for y1 and y2, and the values 0 and 12 for x1 and x2. That means our equation becomes k minus 0 over 12 minus 0. Since anything minus 0 is itself, our equation becomes 2 equals k over 12. We can solve for k by multiplying both sides by 12, which gives us k equals 24. Circle answer choice D because that's the right answer. That problem required us to apply the information we know about slopes, as well as the slope formula that we learned earlier. Even though it's a lot of information, once you learn it, you can plug it all in to find the answer quickly. Now, we'll look at an SAT problem. Let's make this one a pause and solve so you can work it out on your own before we go through it together. Grab some paper and a pencil, and when I say pause, you'll pause this video and solve the problem. When you're done, unpause the video so we can make sure you know how to solve the problem and get to the right answer. Here's the question. 
If each of the equations below is graphed on the xy plane, which one will produce a line with a positive slope containing the point 3, 2? The answers are A, x plus y equals 5, B, x minus y equals 1, C, 3x minus 2y equals 10, and D, x plus y squared equals 7. All right, it's in your hands now. Ready, set, pause. <laughs>